I remember seeing this meme nearly 10 years ago, and while it was funny, it's turned out to be a sad reality over time. Being the son of arguably the greatest basketball player ever, Bronny hasn't had full control of his narrative, and that's put him in difficult positions. In today's video, I'm going to analyze Bronny's entire basketball career and explain how unrealistic expectations in both the past and present have set him up for failure. Before we get into it, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the start of next season and your support goes a long way. With all of that being said, let's get into the video. In order to understand the type of player Bronny is, we have to go back to his days in middle school. In the summer of 2018, Bronny's AAU team went viral. Everyone wanted to see LeBron's son play, and with him being the coach, that only brought more attention to these games. While the name recognition was there, this team was also extremely talented. The roster featured eight future D1 athletes across basketball and football. Bronny was the most popular of the bunch, but the most talented was Mikey Williams. At the time, Mikey was the consensus number one player in his class, and it was easy to see why. He was the star of this team, and Bronny was able to take a back seat to him. If you read old scouting reports on Bronny, this was always considered to be the best role for him. He was seen as a good defender with high IQ and shooting potential, but never as a lead ball handler or number one option. When he went to Sierra Canyon for high school, he stayed in this role. As a freshman, Bronny played with future NBA players in Zaire Williams, Brandon Boston, and Amari Bailey. The team finished 30-4 on the season and went on to win the regional title. However, as those players graduated and Bronny took on a larger role, Sierra Canyon didn't find as much success. They still had good records during the regular season, but they flamed out in the playoffs. Bronny suffered bad playoff losses in his junior and senior years, and he struggled in both games. While he was clearly a Division I talent, it was at this point that the hype got to be too much. After his last high school game, the Los Angeles Times wrote an article on the game, and they stated that an uncertain future lied ahead for Bronny. However, around the same time, LeBron suggested on Twitter that Bronny was already better than some NBA players. Whether LeBron was being serious or not, it put an even bigger spotlight on his son. After that tweet, Bronny coincidentally went from a 4-star to a 5-star recruit seemingly overnight. On top of that, he started to appear in the top 10 of 2024 mock drafts. Now, I don't want to make it seem like Bronny is a bad basketball player and that his play had no impact on those rankings. Bronny showed potential in high school and especially in the EYBL as he got closer to college. However, I'd argue that the spotlight and hype around his name led people to feel much more optimistic about his ability. In high school, Bronny was listed at 6'4", and given how tall his dad is, there was a belief that he was still growing. Therefore, people viewed Bronny as a guard with good size, athleticism, defense, IQ, and shooting. When Jonathan Gavoni placed Bronny 10th in his mock draft, he compared him to a good 3 and D player in DeAnthony Melton. The thing is, these projections turned out to be over-exaggerations. According to Synergy Sports, Bronny shot just 33% on catch and shoot threes in high school, so while the jumper looked nice, it didn't go in consistently. His shooting numbers dropped further in college, and to make matters worse, it was revealed that he was actually 6'1 and a half at the NBA Draft Combine. When you're a smaller guard with room to grow as a shooter, that's not a good combination in the NBA. The truth is, Bronny was considered a top 40 player in his class for most of his high school career. That's very impressive, however you'd expect that type of player to stay in college for multiple years, prove themselves at the D1 level, and hopefully get drafted after polishing their skills. Instead, people tried to talk Bronny up as a one-and-done player. I've heard the argument that he'll fit better in the NBA than college, and that he could develop into someone like Drew Holiday or Derek White. Unfortunately, there's not much evidence to support these claims, and it's made his early NBA career a polarizing topic. Barani's struggles in Summer League have been well documented, and the big debate is whether he deserves the criticism or not. Ultimately, we're talking about the 55th overall pick, and players taken at that spot usually don't pan out. As a result, we shouldn't be expecting him to light up the Summer League, or prove that he's ready to play minutes in the NBA. However, you can't use this argument and then say that he just needs time to develop while comparing him to very good NBA players. This is something I've seen Gilbert Arenas do, and ultimately, it creates a dynamic where more attention and pressure is put on Bronny, but Arenas puts himself in a win-win situation. If Bronny doesn't succeed in the league, that's fine, because as we've established, most late second rounders don't stick around. On the other hand, Arenas has frequently compared him to Drew Holiday, and with the attention Bronny's name brings, comparing him to that caliber of player only brings added pressure. If Bronny doesn't do much in the league, Arenas doesn't look bad, but if Bronny turns out to be a good player, he looks smart for preaching patience. The thing is, second rounders usually aren't afforded much patience. Some of them never play a single NBA game, and many of them don't last for more than a year or two in the league. 
Second round picks are seen as expendable, so if they don't prove anything early on, it's easy to justify getting rid of them. That being said, you have to justify why Bronny James, a late second round pick, deserves everyone's patience, and you can't do that by making unrealistic comparisons or by bringing up that he hit uncontested threes at the draft combine. Until that justification is provided, you're only adding more fuel to the fire of his critics, and they'll keep saying that nepotism is the only reason why he's in the league. While there's tons of nepotism in the NBA, this case is different. With Bronny, his successes and failures are in the open for the public to see. As I've touched on, critics of Bronny aren't convinced that he's an NBA caliber player, so if he keeps having underwhelming performances, that's only going to fuel the critics' narrative. Yes, there are many parents who have given their kids NBA jobs when they weren't necessarily the best available hire. The thing is, these kids aren't in the spotlight like Bronny is. Atlanta Hawks fans may be upset with their director of operations being the owner's son, but that's not an engaging topic for all NBA fans. On top of that, we don't watch the front office perform on national television, nor do we critique them on a daily basis like we do with the players. LeBron James is one of the most polarizing athletes ever, and his son has to deal with all of the attention that brings day in and day out. Knowing all this, I would just recommend we leave Bronny alone. Sure, if he weren't LeBron's son, he wouldn't have been drafted this year. However, that shouldn't be viewed as some crime because given LeBron's status as the face of the league for 20 plus years, he deserves to have his son as a teammate if that's what he wants. On the other hand, we don't need to be going against the grain and putting excess pressure on Bronny by comparing him to very good NBA players. At the end of the day, Bronny never asked for any of this. He's just a kid who loves playing basketball and who strived to make the NBA one day. He didn't ask for these high expectations, and the more we try to predict his NBA future or discuss whether he deserves to be in the league, the more pressure it puts on him to perform. Maybe it would have been better for his development to stay in college, but had he done that, there's no guarantee he'd have made the league. He could have gotten injured, or LeBron could have retired by the time he was ready, which may have dissuaded the Lakers or any other team from taking him. By entering the draft this year, he got himself a four-year contract in the league, and the opportunity to work with NBA trainers over that span. It is also important to bring up the health scare he had and the impact that played in all of this. Going back to Gilbert Arenas again, he brought up a very good point on one of his recent podcasts. Essentially, he said that when someone close to you goes through something similar to what Bronny did, it gives you a whole new appreciation for that person. Obviously, LeBron has always had love for his family. With the health scare Bronny had, it reinforces that tomorrow isn't promised. By playing with his son now, they'll get to see him every day and they'll get to be a part of history by being on the same team. At the end of the day, that should be the focus here. If we choose to overanalyze and be hypercritical of Bronny, we'll fail to fully immerse ourselves in a really cool story that we may never see happen again. Anyways, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. With all of that being said, I'm out, and I'll see you in the next video.